In this video, we'll be taking a look at your WordPress settings. So WordPress offers quite a few settings options. We're going to walk through them so you'll have a good understanding of which settings you'd like to customize. From the WordPress dashboard, locate the settings menu. It'll be over here on your left. If we hover over this menu, you'll see a sub-menu appear with options for general, writing, reading, discussion, media, permalinks, and privacy. We're going to go ahead and click on General, and the first thing you'll notice in General Settings is your site title. You'll want to make sure this site title matches your site because your site will be visible in Google search results. By default, WordPress includes just another WordPress site as your site's tagline. You'll probably want to update this tagline to be descriptive of your site because it will also show up in Google search results. The next section is the WordPress address or site URL. For the site address URL, you can enter the address if you want your site homepage to be different from the directory where you've installed WordPress. In most cases, it's probably best to just leave these two URLs alone, but if you have any questions or you're thinking about changing it, here's a link that can answer any questions you may have. Next is your admin email. You'll want to set this to an email you check regularly as all website notifications will be sent to this email. Below are settings for membership. With WordPress, you can allow anyone to register for your site. This is a great feature if you're running a membership site. New users by default are set to subscriber. You'll probably want to leave this here. You don't want to accidentally grant someone admin access who registers for your site. Below that, you can change your website's language. And underneath that is your time zone where you can adjust your time zone to whichever time zone you're in. Keep in mind that this date format will be visible on all blog posts. If you have any questions about this format, you can check out the documentation on date and time formatting by clicking on the link below this section. Next up are the writing settings. From the menu on the left, open up the writings page. Now all settings on this page will apply to the writing and publishing content on your website. Here you can adjust your post format. The post via email settings will allow you to send an email to your site with post content. To use this, you'll need to set up a secret email account with POP3 access. And any email received at this address will be posted. For this reason, it's a good idea to keep this address secret. The last section is for update services. When you publish a new post, WordPress will automatically notify the update services listed here. For more information, check out the update service link in this section. Now we can move on to the reading section. This screen contains the settings that affect the display of your content. Here you can choose what's displayed on the front page of your site, either your latest posts or your fixed static pages. Once we've created a few pages, these pages will be listed here as options for what's shown on your front page and for where you display your posts. In this next section is where you can control the display of content in your RSS feeds to include the maximum number of posts to display and whether to show them full text or summary. You must click the Save Settings button at the bottom of the screen for the new settings to take effect. And in this last section is for search engine visibility. If you'd like to search engines to ignore your site, you can click this checkbox next to Discourage Search Engines from Indexing My Site. This might be a helpful setting if you're currently developing your site and you're not ready for it to be indexed by any search engines. We'll click the Save Changes button here at the bottom of the screen to update any changes we've made. Alright, moving on, we'll take a look at the discussion settings. The screen will provide lots of options for the management of our comments and controlling links to our posts and pages. In this first section, you'll be able to manage post settings. In the second section, you'll be able to manage comment settings and you can establish guidelines for how people post comments and how their comments are handled. Here you can be emailed whenever a comment is posted or for example you have comments that need to be approved, you have comments with words blocked in them, there's many many ways you can customize how this is set up. Below this is an avatar section. An avatar is a profile image you can have assigned to your email address so when you comment and an avatar is enabled you can choose which ones are displayed on your website. Make sure you save all these changes when you're done. And now we can head over to the media section. 
The media settings page allows you to set the maximum sizes for images that are inserted into the body of your posts. These settings are great for saving time if you always want to make images to be the same size or if you want to apply a default setting for medium and large size images. Here in the uploading files you can check this box and it will organize your uploads into month and year based on the folders they're in. Once you've adjusted these settings, don't forget to save these as well and we can head over to permalinks. Permalinks are the permanent URLs to individual pages and your blog posts, as well as category and tag archives. Basically, a permalink is a web address used to link your contact that is permanent and never changes. That's why they're called permalinks. This screen allows you to choose your default permalink structure. You can choose from common settings or create a custom URL structures. By default, WordPress uses URLs which have question marks and lots of numbers in them. If you want to change the permalinks, I suggest you do it at the birth of your site. If you're to do it too late in the life of your site, you could break links that have been posted prior to the change. So this is a decision you might want to make pretty early on. If you'd like more information on setting up your permalinks, click, click the Help tab in the top right hand corner of your screen. Here you'll get an overview of common settings and structures to help you select your permalink structure. You can also click on Documentation or head over to the WordPress support forums. Next, we can head over to the Privacy setting. This Privacy Settings page was implemented in WordPress version 4.9.6 to make sure you're in compliance with the GDPR. Okay, that was a lot of WordPress settings, but going through all of these will save you a lot of time in the long run. We'll see you in the next video series where we'll be covering the difference between WordPress posts and WordPress pages.